Because I'll tell you one thing, if you tell the truth, you have no idea what's going to happen to you. Because you have to let go of that. It's like, I'm going to say what I think. And then what I'm going to assume, faith, I'm going to assume that whatever happens, if I am telling the truth, is the best thing that could happen. Because the truth brings about what is best. And even if it looks hard for me, because it might be, you know, because people take the easy way out often when they lie. Even if it looks bad for me, that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I don't see the whole, I don't see the whole picture. And you know, if you believe that the truth will set you free and that there is such a thing as the truth and that the truth is redemptive, then you're pretty much stuck with that conclusion. But one of the remarkable things about that, and this really is worth knowing, is that if you do that, you will have your adventure. In this enlightening video, renowned psychologist and best-selling author Jordan Peterson delves into the profound importance of telling the truth. Filmed during one of his captivating lectures, Peterson eloquently argues why honesty isn't just a moral virtue, but a foundational principle that shapes our reality, relationships, and personal growth. This video is not just a lecture. It's an invitation to reflect on the role of truth in our lives and to consider the kind of world we want to create. Whether you're a longtime follower of Jordan Peterson or newly curious about his ideas, this video promises to challenge your perspectives and inspire you to think deeper about the values that guide your actions. Watch as Jordan Peterson articulately unfolds the significance of truth, emphasizing its critical role in individual integrity and societal cohesion. Prepare to be moved and motivated by his compelling arguments and passion for genuine human connection. This is a must-watch for anyone seeking to understand the profound effects of honesty on our lives and the world at large. Right? The, that's the Abrahamic adventure, you know? The call from God that justifies your life because of the excitement of what you're doing. And the truth does that. And then, if it's the truth, man, it's your adventure. Because what bloody adventure are you having if you tell someone else's story? It's not yours. And maybe if it's not yours, it's not good enough for you. And then you suffer, and then you're bitter, and then you're cruel, and then you're resentful. That's not good, or you get arrogant. So, so you break up your life, you know, into practicalities, your career, your education, your intimate relationship, your marriage, your friendship. Hopefully your intimate relationship and your marriage are the same thing. <laughs> Your use of time outside work, your civic duty, you know, and you have develop an image for yourself, a vision for yourself on all those fronts and assume that you can have with the proper sacrifices what you need and want. And then I'll say something interesting about that because that's the pursuit of goods in a practical way, right? In what's valuable in a practical way, in an implementable way. And you pick those pathways and you dedicate yourself to their optimization along any of those axes. And then you learn to optimize an aim and then you see, once you've learned to optimize an aim across a set of goods, you start to aim at what is what unites those goods. Because what's, that's what makes goods good. It's whatever is common across a set of goods. That's the highest good or a higher good. And so by practicing any good in any rigorous sense and making the proper sacrifices in that direction, you simultaneously learn to approach the good that is the sum or the essence of all those proximal goods and I would say that the the essential insistence in Christianity is that the good that unites all those goods is the same good that's reflected in the image of Christ which is an image of acceptance of the suffering of life and the necessity of serving the lowest as the highest calling and that's something and it might be true like really actually 100% true, more true than anything else, and I actually think it is, partly because the freest societies that we have, that the world's ever known, the most successful societies, are predicated on precisely that idea, as, a, as an unshakable foundation, a self-evident truth in the case of your country. And so it might be true, and if it is true, and if that is real, then why in the world would you ever attempt to do anything else? And it's kind of earth-shattering in some sense to take this with real seriousness, you know, it's all very frightening. If you're not afraid by, of that, of that vision, you know, and what it implies for you and your soul, then you didn't understand it. But it's also 
an unbelievably, what would you say, endlessly promising vision of what your life could be. And you know, you might think, well, I need a life so rich that I can justify its suffering. And that's really asking for something because there's no shortage of suffering in life. And it's no one thinks their own suffering isn't real. And maybe there's a possibility that there's some aim that's so high that, that the attempt that the attempt alone to move in that direction is of sufficient value to act as a panacea for the suffering. And so you could say at the end of your life, oh my God, that was so hard. It was worth it. And so that's the choice you make at the crossroads. If you have any sense,